Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Millard Fillmore, Part 3, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, Community Servant. We stopped last time in 1853. Millard Fillmore's uh, presidency came to an end in March. He was the 13th president. And at the inauguration of Franklin Pierce, his successor, uh, Ab his wife, Ab Fillmore's uh, wife, Abigail, got sick. They were planning to go uh, return to Buffalo, and uh, so they, they delayed their return, and, uh, and she did not recover. She died a month later in Washington. And so this was devastating to Millard because his, uh, they, were very, they had a very good marriage. And he had this to say after his wife died, quote, For 27 years, my entire married life, I was always greeted with a happy smile. Abigail died on March 30th, 1853. Uh, Millard Fillmore biographer Robert J. Rayback wrote, quote, The next day the grief-saddened saddened family left with her remains for Buffalo and buried her the following day. All plans for trips and politics, all worries about employment and dignity, all thoughts of stately homes dissolved before the spectacle of death. Retirement was to be a horrible loneliness. <clears throat> the following year, in July of 1854, Miller Fillmore's daughter, Mary, died as well at age 22. So this was a real, really devastating, losing his wife and his daughter. She was often the official White House hostess because of her mother was, was sick. Robert J. Rayback wrote, quote, Millard Fillmore's grief was boundless. He loved his daughter almost to the point of dotage. In Washington, she had been a great comfort and had frequently acted as his hostess when her mother was indisposed. Since her mother's death, she had taken on the task of running the household. Well, in his grief, uh, Fillmore decided the following year to take a uh, one-year grand tour of Europe and the Middle East. And he did that. He, he went to England, Ireland, France, Germany, Italy, Turkey, and Egypt. He was received by Queen Victoria in uh, Great Britain, who called him the handsomest man she'd ever met. In Germany, he met Alexander von Humboldt, the German naturalist and explorer, who gave him a personal tour of Berlin. He also met King Friedrich Wilhelm IV of Prussia. In Rome, Fillmore had an audience with Pope Pius IX. It was a good trip, very rejuvenating and fulfilling. Europeans were impressed with Millard Fillmore's modesty, and Fillmore had been fascinated by his whole life by geography and history, and enjoyed seeing the famous place, places that he'd only read about. In London, 1855, one observer said this about Millard Fillmore, quote, No American ever received more attention in the mother country than Mr. Fillmore. His noble presence, his mild and courtly manners, about which there was the beauty of repose com combined to charm the English people. In his visits, visit to in England, he was offered an honorary degree by the University of, of Oxford, but turned it down, citing a lack of classical education and the fact that he didn't understand the Latin text of the diploma. And he said, quote, No one should accept a degree he cannot read. Now, interestingly, uh, Martin Van Buren was also in London at the same time, and the two crossed paths. One day, uh, they were both in the gallery of the House of Commons. Again, as we said, uh, Miller Fillmore also met during this trip the Pope in Rome. He also visited Jerusalem and, and Constantinople, Jerusalem, the holy city, and Constantinople, the, uh, well, at that time known as Istanbul, the capital of the Ottoman Empire, the old uh, capital of the Greek Orthodox Empire, or the Greek, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the old Greek Empire, the old uh, Greek Byzantine Empire. 1856 was a presidential election year, and uh, the, the Whig Party was uh, very weak. It was dying, and uh, Fillmore was nominated by the Whig Party and also the American Party for president, two, two parties. He, he, did, not, uh, he did, did not win. He, he only won the state of Maryland, and this American Party was also known as the Know Nothing Party. It was anti-Catholic and anti-immigrant. 
His vice president was Andrew Donaldson, the adopted son of Andrew Jackson. Now, in the election, um, uh, James Buchanan uh, was elected the Democrat. However, if there had been a change of 8,000 votes in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Louisiana, and if those votes had gone to Millard Fillmore, the election would have gone to the House of Representatives for a decision. The Whig Party was almost dead in 1856. The new, new Republican Party was taking its place as the opposition party to the Democrats. And the Republicans, uh, their slogan was free soil, free labor, free speech, and free men. In the election, the Democrat, 56, the Democrat James, Bu- James Buchanan defeated the Republican candidate, John C. Fremont. 1856, Millard Fillmore had this to say, quote, As an American, I have no hostility to foreigners. Having witnessed their deplorable condition in the old country, God forbid I should add to their sufferings by refusing them asylum in this. Millard Fillmore continued, talking to the American people, quote, You should be thankful that you live in this free and happy land. Guard well your institutions, and be ever watchful against any attempt to divide or destroy our country. 1858, February uh, 10th, uh, Miller Fillmore remarried, married for the second time, to a woman named Caroline McIntosh, who was a wealthy widow, and the couple purchased a large mansion in Buffalo. He also, during this time, was chancellor of the University of Buffalo, now, their home, uh, Millard and Caroline, his new wife, their home was on Niagara Square. Robert J. Rayback wrote, quote, This mammoth structure became their home for the remainder of their lives. Its Gothic style with parapets, balustrades, and simulated towers was decorated in the elegant taste of the, of the Victorian era. Um, Fillmore, uh, Millard Fillmore, in this really nice, large house, he entertained many visitors including the Japanese ambassador Tomomi Iwakura and His Royal Highness Prince Arthur of England. Okay, now his new wife, Carolyn, had many portraits and busts of Fillmore in their home. Robert J. Rayback wrote, quote, Her efforts became the butt of much amusement among the young people. 1860 was another presidential election year, and the Republican Abraham Lincoln was elected. Millard Fillmore did not support him, but sent him a cordial note of congratulation and pledged his support. When, now, when Lincoln traveled to uh, Washington on the way, he stopped in Buffalo and spent the night at Fillmore's home in, in Buffalo with his wife, Mary. Of course, the uh, Civil War broke out uh, the following year, and uh, north and south, uh, Millard Fillmore organized a local militia of elderly men a volunteer home guard in support of the war. He also raised $25,000 for the relief of wounded soldiers. And Millard Fillmore became Buffalo's civic war leader. 1861, Millard Fillmore had this to say, quote, My fellow citizens, it is no time for any man to shrink from the responsibility which events have cast upon him. We have reached a crisis when no man has a right to stand neutral. Civil war has been inaugurated, and we must meet it. Our Constitution is in danger, and we must defend it. It is no time now to inquire by whose fault or folly this state of things has been produced. Let every man stand to his post, and let posterity find our skeleton and armor on the spot where duty required us to stand. By 1864, the the, the horror and devastation of the Civil War was uh, unbelievable how much suffering the war caused. <clears throat> and Miller Fillmore had this to say in 1864, quote, Three years of civil war have desolated the fairest portion of our land, loaded the country with an, an enormous debt that the sweat of millions yet unborn must be taxed to pay, arrayed brother against brother, father against son in mortal combat, deluged our country with fraternal blood, whitened our battlefield with the bones of the slain, and darkened the sky with the pall of mourning. When victory is won, let us show our magnanimity by winning back the deluded multitude who have been seduced into this rebellion, by extending to them every act of clemency and kindness in our power, and by restoring them all their rights under the Constitution. This I conceive to be Christian forgiveness, 
and the best policy and the only one which can ever restore this union. That was a wonderful uh, statement. He was talking about after the war was over, is uh, uh, welcoming back the South, the Confederacy, and, uh, and being kind to them and uh, forgiving them for starting that war. That year, he was, uh, he, Millard Fillmore, and many, many uh, others were getting fed up with the war, and uh, he, he denounced the war and said it was, this is terrible what's going on. You know, it was just beyond human comprehension, all the suffering being inflicted. And he was not alone in his uh, criticism of the war at that time. The Buffalo Commercial Advi- Advertiser called Millard Fillmore a copperhead, a northerner sympathizing with the Confederacy. Fillmore voted for the Democrat George McCle- McClellan, and uh, who, who pledged to end the war if elected. He, he was not elected. And some people considered uh, Fillmore a traitor uh, because of his, the stand that he took. However, the war was won, and the, the, the Union was restored. And after the war, uh, Millard Fillmore resumed his role as the famous citizen of Buffalo. He was very busy with the Buffalo Historical Society, the, and the University of Buffalo. He was a, a wonderful citizen, a good, very good citizen of Buffalo, and then he took another trip to Europe. 1865, Robert J. Rayback wrote, quote, What should an ex-president do as a private citizen? His last 18 years answered, Give his talents to the community. From 1856 onward, his handsome figure stalked Buffalo purposefully as he made his rounds from committee to committee in search of action to improve his city. Each year, his hair grew whiter and his tread less resilient, but his enthusiasm never waned. A stubborn desire for accomplishment and its resulting glow of satisfaction kept him going. Robert J. Rayback continued, quote, Few things were closer to his heart than the desire to see Buffalo prosper. In 1862, Buffalo became the third U.S. city, American city, to establish a permanent art museum, and Millard Fillmore was the driving force. Robert J. Rayback wrote, quote, Probably no other civic cause won his affection as thoroughly as the Buffalo Historical Society. For weeks at a time, it seemed to possess his life. Now, back in 1847, when he, he had worked to establish the University of Buffalo, Millard Fillmore had this to say, quote, Why should a father be compelled to send his son to some eastern village or distant city to, ke- to give him a liberal education? Can it be that this proud queen city of the lakes, into whose lap is poured the commercial wealth of eight states, cannot maintain a single college? Are our crowded wharves and glutted warehouses mere mockeries of wealth? No, our numerous and costly temples for religious worship show what Buffalo can accomplish when its sympathies are enlisted in a good cause. In 1866, uh, Millard Fillmore welcomed visitors to him, his home, including General William Tecumseh Sherman and President Andrew Johnson. 1874, February 13th, Fillmore, Lord Fillmore had a stroke while shaving. Two, two weeks later, he had a second stroke, and on March 8th, he died. His funeral procession went from the mansion on Niagara Square down Delaware Avenue to Forest Lawn Cemetery, and an obelisk was erected at his grave. A generation later, a Millard Fillmore statue was erected at City Hall on Niagara Square. He died at March 8th at age 74 in, in, in Buffalo, and President Ulysses S. Grant gave a eulogy and said, quote, The long-continued and useful public service and eminent purity of character of the deceased ex-president will, re- will be remembered beyond the days of mourning, in which a nation will be thrown by the event which is thus announced. Reportedly, Millard Fillmore's last words were, quote, the nourishment is palatable. After he'd been, he was eating some, some soup. Again, he was buried in the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Buffalo. Millard Fillmore had this to say at one point, quote, God knows that I detest slavery, but it, it is an existing evil for which we are not responsible, and we must endure it and give it such protection as is guaranteed by the Constitution till we can get rid of it without destroying the last hope for free government in the world. Millard Fillmore was a visionary. He, 
He uh, he worked for the Transcontinental Railroad, which uh, Ab- President Abraham Lincoln began. He worked to open Japan to the outside world and, and trade for, with for other countries, and that was accomplished under President Franklin Pierce. He worked for the uh, for the U.S. Uh, for, for Hawaii to become a part of the United States, and that happened under President William McKinley. And he also promoted a Central American canal, which was started under Theodore Roosevelt. He was very busy with his uh, civic affairs in bu- Buffalo, his, his, his uh, community service in his retirement. And his favorite activity was, was working for the Buffalo Historical Society. He was a big Buffalo booster. He had this, dis- Miller Fillmore said this, quote, Buffalo is destined by its position to be what Alexandria and Venice were. Again, there's a pink granite obelisk at his grave. A small crowd of Millard Fillmore cultists, uh, supporters of Fillmore, gather at every year at his grave on his birthday. And this continues to, to the present time. Uh, one of his biographers, Richard Norton Smith, said that Millard Fillmore is, quote, best known for being one of the least known presidents. Now, the statue at City Hall, which uh, was uh, erected for him, Robert J. Rayback described it and wrote, quote, Beneficently, it looked out over the community which he helped create and which shaped his destiny. Eloquently, eloquent, eloquently, it spoke out part of the story of his life. In its stony coldness, however, it could not reveal the warmth and wisdom with which he had defended the Union. For this for these uh, three vid- talks, these three videos, I read three uh, bi- biographies of Millard Fillmore. The Remarkable Life of Millard Fillmore by George Pendle, 2007. Millard Fillmore by Paul Finkelman, 2011. And Millard Fillmore, Biography of a President by Robert J. Rayback, 1959. Now, in conclusion, Millard Fillmore is, is considered by most historians a failure, a weak president, and I couldn't disagree more with that, uh, with that analysis. He was president at an impossible time in American history. If Abraham Lincoln had been president at, during that time, I don't think he could have done any better. It was, the country was headed towards civil war, and nobody could have stopped, could have stopped it uh, unless, unless the abolitionist movement had backed off and maybe... Uh, and, and then eventually slavery would have ended. At any rate, the war happened, and blaming Millard Fillmore for the war. Now, uh, he came from a very humble background uh, of, 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 of poverty growing up, and it really achieved, uh, you know, the American dream. It was a very, very well-educated man through, through self-education, almost no formal schooling, no high school diploma, no college, but he became extremely knowledgeable. And nobody could have been a better citizen for Buffalo, New York. And then all the things he did for the country, the various things mentioned, the Transcontinental Railroad, opening Japan to trade, uh, the um, uh, other things, including uh, promoting the Panama Canal. Now, the, uh, the thing that uh, he was blamed for, the signing into law, the Fugitive Slave Act, he did that to, to help preserve the Union. And ever since he's been blamed, well, I think that's just uh, that's uh, that's an opinion, and a political opinion. And there's no reason for for that to, to continue up till now. Political opinions are often expressed and then seem to become written in stone as fact when they're not fact. Millard Fillmore lived a very noble life of uh, of achievement, good character, hard work, and na- national service to the United States and community service to Buffalo, New York. God bless Millard Fillmore, a man who served his country well. Well, that concludes today's presentation. I hope you have a good history book to read or find one. There's so many amazing history books that have been written. Uh, You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we've made 609 history videos in seven areas. World history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. You also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History. If you live in Metro Manila, Philippines, and are looking for a high school, you might consider Restless Educational Center in San Juan, Metro Manila. We help students who have had difficulty in the larger traditional high high schools. And the the website is restless.education. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. And And I'll see you next time.